Hey everybody, uh, Brian Good here. Thanks for clicking on to the uh, Snow Talk weather blog. Sorry, I mean just my camera. Sometimes I'm short, sometimes I'm tall. I think it depends on the time of the week. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, your weekend. It was a cold one, for sure. The coldest we've had so far this season. And uh, our friends to the north, I know you saw the video there of Indianapolis. Got some decent snow. We'll take a look at the visible satellite, if you haven't seen that image yet. A few moments. Our stats, as you see there, no snow. I was hoping we at least get a trace amount officially listed at the airport that did not happen although i did see snowflakes where i lived even uh it was snow flurries flying around so there were flurries but uh, again they just didn't fall at the right spot at the airport to get officially a trace measured so uh still staying at zero normal to date is only a tenth so uh, it's not like we're doing that bad but compared to last year yeah a little different last year we had 3.3 but that was an anomaly snow not really something that would be typical all right so what's on the board for this update zero systems ahead. Now, before you get all sad and all upset with me, you snow lovers, keep in mind, I promise you guys, when we, uh, as, uh, as I do every year, when we create snow talk and we do these blogs, I'm not going to create or wish cast snow systems. I'm not going to create them out of thin air. Uh, I need solid data to build a confidence level at least to a one, if not higher, to make it a system of interest. And while there are some minor little things, and we'll cover that, that I do see happening over the next 14 days, uh, the pattern is still not there yet for anything that would I suggest that you all get really interested about and, and really uh, pay attention to. So uh, because of that, I'm going to keep it at zero. Now, could that change? Of course. That's why you've got to check the blog every day, because if I get new data, data that I agree with, that will raise my confidence level, you will see... Uh, that number change here on the board. But as of today, my confidence level is uh, low enough that I, I just can't see putting any specific dates on the screen. So don't be all downers on me here, guys. Don't cry. Again, it's only autumn, right? All right, here's a look at the uh, regional look to the Ohio Valley. Got snow to the north. Uh, strong southwest winds really warming us up here this afternoon. We're already into the upper 40s. I think we went 50 in some areas today. Now let me get rid of the infrared satellite and the radar, and you'll see the visible satellite, and you can see where the clouds are and what is snow, because the snow is not moving, it's staying still. And I love this shot, because you can see the rivers across uh, Illinois, Indiana, and Iowa. It's a pretty shot there. You can definitely tell the track of that snow band as it pushes to the east, and how it just kind of fills it out as it wraps itself up into the north, into Canada on Sunday. Uh, close, but uh, close doesn't count when it comes to getting snow around here. I know that from you all. Uh, our pattern this week, fairly quiet the next several days. I mean, there's not much coming our way. It's very nice and clear. Uh, we'll get a warming trend. We are going to get another southern branch feature that will move in. At the same time, we will have another northern branch feature that will work together to kind of give us a good chance of rain, but not until later in the week. So let me uh, start you off with how I think this is going to play out. Uh, we're going to get to get that southern branch fetch of moisture into our area. At the same time, these northern features are not very dominant, but they do allow some focus for that band of rain to uh, push into the area. It's just enough of a sweep to clear out the rain briefly, but the southern branch keeps going. Even though a front, if you will, passes by, the southern branch is still feeding in moisture at it, so it kind of gets bent downward, aims down into Tennessee and the Carolinas for a couple days, if not even that long, maybe 24 hours, and then it'll start to build back north again, and then we get another feature that'll come along. And then try to knock it back down again. And we're going to see that pattern continue for about the next 14 days. The only way you can get anything wintry out of that kind of a scenario is you're going to have upper level lows that could perhaps produce some flakes in the backside as they pass through. But the pattern does not feature any dominant cold snaps that will interact with good phased systems to develop into snowstorms that a lot of you snow fans uh, love to see happen. It's just not a pattern for that kind of setup. All right, so... Uh, and the indices really support that as well. We've talked a lot about the EPO. It's going back positive again in uh, the month of December here. So uh, that is really uh, wiping out a lot of confidence on anything lasting very long when it comes to cold weather. And the NAO also says that the idea of anything blocking in our area, not going to happen. Uh, yeah, PNA is positive. That usually would good be a good sign of troughs building into the east. That's why we're getting some of these cold shots that are coming in but they are bumping up against the positive EPL. And the two are battling out over our area, but the EPL seems to be winning overall. 
and that's the reason why um, we're not seeing anything major. So let's cover this holiday week because a lot of you have travel plans, and really this is a great, this is one of the better holiday weeks I've seen in a long time when it comes to Thanksgiving. Uh, here's the uh, short range model that's a little more detailed, and I'll get into a longer range in a second. First off, tonight, it's going to be cold tonight. In the 30s we go. We're not talking about a lot of widespread 20s. I wouldn't roll like a 29 in some areas, but most areas will be in the 30s tonight. Tomorrow, even warmer. I think we have a good chance to push into the 50s for uh, Tuesday. Wednesday, uh, perhaps. The data cuts off there at the last second. Sorry about that. But I do think we'll have a good chance to hit about 60, I think, on Wednesday. Thanksgiving Day, a lot of you uh, may have plans around noon to visit your family. Uh, we may have some high clouds around, but it won't be too bad. So, but you should be in the 50s by that point on Thanksgiving Day. But if you're having Thanksgiving toward the evening time frame, some of you do that. Uh, there are signs that we'll see temperatures then into the 60s. Again, with uh, a mixed cloud overhead. It would be dark at that point, but uh, not a bad day. I mean, there's no snow, so there's nothing to slow you down there. And really, it should stay dry on Thursday. Friday's when things begin to change. And here is the uh, GFS brought to you by friends, brought to you by friends over at Weather Bay Analytics. It shows how uh, we've got this first stream of moisture heading our way. And again, an impulse moving in from the north, and it kind of kicks it along. So here comes the wall of rain. Uh, is waiting to Friday. So if you shoppers plan on a wet day, that and a lot of traffic, hopefully, uh, I hate to say this because I'm a big fan of tradition, you eat on Thanksgiving and you shop on Friday. But for those areas that are opening up on Thursday, those stores, it may be better to do it then because Friday is looking pretty wet. Uh, Friday night, again, the first wave knocks the southern stream down to the south. Yes, it tries to bring in a little bit of snowflake action. I don't see it happening here. It may happen in Pennsylvania, maybe East Kentucky. Um, but it's going to knock the wave of moisture down as we get into Saturday and part of Sunday. But again, it's only temporary when it, these little waves come in from the north that it can knock the southern stream features down because it won't take long and they begin to push back up again. And this could be interesting for Sunday morning, and I say that in a very loose term here, that if it moves in too quickly, there could be some sleet initially early on Sunday morning, Thanksgiving weekend, but it wouldn't last long, maybe 20 minutes at best, and it's going to warm up quickly into the 40s and be pure rain. So it's not going to be a travel hazard. But in case you see that, and if it gets passed around virally on social media, oh, there could be sleet and snow early on Sunday. Don't pay attention to that. I don't see any sign of that being an issue at all. I think it's going to be brief, if anything, at all. Because the Euro, by the way, is a little slower with bringing this in and out until Sunday night. At that point, it wouldn't be a nothing but pure rain. So, again, it'll come in waves. Friday, first wave. You should see the wave get pushed to the south Saturday. Pushes back up again Sunday with a good wave of moisture. And then, then we get the upper level of low as we get into uh, next week, the first few days of December. And that is the one that could give us maybe some snowflakes on the backside next Tuesday. I'm looking at the Euro now, and it's hinting to that. If that trend continues and it becomes a little more potent, then maybe it'll get added to the board tomorrow. And again, that'll be around December 2nd. Right now, I'm not going to add it. Here's our early winter outlook, though. And we're going to hold on to this. The only thing, again, I wish I would have done is drawn the colder air a little more to the south into the uh, plain states here and uh, gone a little more for the snow, obviously, for Chicagoland because they've set records. But overall, the theme is hold true that we're getting more warm air than cold shots in the southeast, and it's been very active across the Rockies, a lot more rain and snow. This is what we're expecting, though, as we into the midwinter, the flip to take place where uh, the groundwork is being laid now for all the cold and snow across the Rockies and the uh, Canadian uh, provinces, and then we see everything flip over to a much more active storm track for the southern part of the country that could get things really interesting for the Ohio Valley in the East Coast. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. I still think that's going to happen. When? Don't know yet. Um, December looks to be the month where we start to see the changes begin. Um, last year it took until January 23rd. This year I don't think we have to wait that long, but it will be uh, a while before we get locked into a pattern that I think a lot of you be a little more excited about. So there you have it. Uh, again, nothing on the horizon that is alarming. Uh, just minor little things, little bumps here and there. The only thing that I could see possibly being added to the board would be December 2nd, but right now I'm going to leave it off. Let's give it some time. we got to eat turkey, right? Let's get some, eat some turkey. Let's relax. And then we'll, uh, then we'll have some fun.